Well, it's good to find you out here uh, on this Wednesday evening. Welcome to Parish Prayers and Beyond. I'm Pastor Craig Beeman, and it's time for us to continue our look at the fundamentals of the faith. Uh, I believe the last time we spoke on this topic, or as we were looking, uh, when we looked last, we were looking at the church. And, uh, well, we spoke, whoops, <laughs> we spoke uh, about, uh, well, a few things concerning the church. First, the democratic nature of each church. Um, actually, last time, I believe we looked at the officers of the church and what the meaning of the word church is, uh, ecclesia. Uh, we looked at that. You'll have to go back and look at that uh, if you missed that one. Uh, but this evening, a few things concerning the church. First, the democratic nature of each church. Herschel Hobbes says that in looking at the letters of Paul, we find that each church functioned as an independent body in the furtherance of the gospel. So each church uh, was an independent church. There was nobody telling each church what they had to do or what they could not do um, as long as they were following the gospel, as long as they were being the church, they were okay. Uh, each church had the authority to receive and even dismiss or exclude members uh, from its body. In Matthew 18, we find out uh, how misbehaving members were dealt with. You'll want to look into Matthew 18 at some point uh, because you'll need to very much be aware of how to handle uh, situations that occur in the church. Uh, any and all opportunity is being given to someone who misbehaves um, to make their, themselves right with the church. I mean, it's a restoration process. Uh, when somebody messes up in the church, they're not just thrown out. No, the, the whole process of restoration is what's, what needs to occur to bring that member back in the body. Uh, now, there are other organizations and clubs that uh, they'll kick people out and they don't want them back. But the church wants, you know, wants the, a person to be in walking right relationship with Jesus. And so we'll do whatever it takes to restore them. Uh, it is the love of God in action. Well, the church uh, gathered together has the presence of Jesus and acts for him. Listen to Matthew 18, 18 from the Amplified Bible. Truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. In other words, the church acts on earth as uh, it's it is a representative uh, they are, it is representative of God. Uh, so we are to do what God does. What God says is okay, we say is okay. What God says is not okay, we must say is not okay. The local church makes up its own mind to join in missionary work with others. It makes up its own mind as to cooperate or not cooperate with decisions made by bodies outside of the church. We may go along with those. We may figure that a, uh, an organization is uh, in line with what we believe. We may believe that an organization is doing something that is good that we want to participate in. And that is our choice as an independent body, a, an autonomous church. Is that, and that's the word we use, autonomous. Uh, we voluntarily work together with other churches. Each church is autonomous. No one but Jesus is in charge of this church. No one but Jesus should be in charge of the, any body, any local body, which is called the church. Remember in Matthew uh, 16, 18, where Jesus said to Peter, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. The word Jesus uses here when he says upon this rock is not the word for stone. Uh, stone is, uh, is not the same here as what he's talking about. The word Jesus uses here is petros. 
Hobbes states that Petros means a stone or fragment of the large rock. Petra means a ledge rock. Uh, a bedrock or foundation stone. And so the church is not founded upon the Petros, a stone. In other words, it, it, it's, it, it's not a stone, but it's founded on the Petra. Peter was simply a fragment or a stone confessing faith in the ledge rock, the foundational stone or Jesus himself. In this instance, Peter then is not to be regarded as a person so much as a symbol of all who profess in f a faith. Uh, the, the church is built uh, out of living stones. Lithos is the word, the l small stones uh, found in uh, 1 Peter 2, 5. They're made alive by their confession of faith in Christ, the Petra, our ledge rock, foundation stone. Through no other institution is God going to have His eternal purpose realized except by and through the church. The church is the body of Christ. It is the hands and feet of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul irons this out a little bit more for us, showing that all Christians are particular members of the body with diversified gifts with which to serve Christ. The church is the custodian of the gospel. It is to ensure that the gospel is shared correctly and often. Uh, the church is universal. It is local as well. Since the church universal will not be a reality until all the redeemed uh, assemble in glory, um, the local church is kind of like a little colony of heaven, a sounding board of the gospel and a fellowship through which we are to carry out our stewardship of the gospel to all people. Since the church is local, it is the only institution through which we can serve. The person who despises the church despises Christ, for it is his body and bride. The church, the church. If you don't have a church home, I want to encourage you to find one. I want to encourage you to link yourself up with a local body of believers so that you can live out the purpose of your life in sharing the gospel. And through the church, we can do it together. And through the church, we can be trained to do it better. And so I encourage you, find a church home. Get a church home. Have a church home who can uh, have a church family that can love on you and, and uh, walk with you through the good times and the bad. Be a part of a church family. As always, there will be some uh, prayer requests. We ask that you join us in and some announcements to come. But thank you for joining us today for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the fact that you have instituted the church you have created the church body as a place where we can collectively carry out the work that you have for us. We can collectively uh, join together, worship you, be there for each other. Surely, certainly, we are a family. And Father, I thank you for that. I pray for my friend, if, uh, if they don't have a church family to call their own, that they would find one soon that they would join in and become a part. God, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are in need of your healing. Father, we pray for relationships that need to be healed. And Father, we pray that you would help those broken relationships to become healed, to become uh, unbroken once again. Father, we thank you for your love for us and for your forgiveness and for your grace. God, we do not deserve your grace, and yet you have chosen to share it with us. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sounds like the birds are having fun today. I'm glad that we're able to be outside once again and to hear them and to be a part of God's, God's world outside, not hiding inside. 
Hope you have a great day. And until next time, this has been Pastor Craig Beeman and Parish Prayers and Beyond. Thank you.